and Defence show opened its doors to exhibitors today. It is hailed as the continent's premier defence show because it attracts buyers and suppliers from all across the world. When it was last held in 2012, more than 300 exhibitors participated and more than 130,000 people attended the four-day show. Now, excitement is building up here as exhibitors pitch up at their posts. We spoke to some of them earlier today. Here's what they had to say about why they feel it's so important to be here. We hope that uh, before, uh, let's say, 5 p.m., uh, we are able uh, to, let's say, show to the other people finally our booth, how it will look for the show in the next days. We are here in Africa because uh, we would like to meet the people from uh, this uh, fabulous continent uh, because we also have the possibility to arrange uh, a shooting test on the field here in the military base. So we will welcome many military delegation, police forces and other authorities from South Africa and above from Pretoria. Yes, we are on schedule. Um, everything on the stand is almost 10% ready to go. Um, we have uh, all of our goodies ready to go on the stand, uh, basically ready for everyone to come and play with them and they can come and take a look at what, what we have to offer. This isn't just one of the most important exhibitions in Africa, it's one of the most important exhibitions in the world. And this is a great opportunity for UK companies to showcase their equipment in the defence and security sector. So this is a great opportunity for us to look for joint ventures and industrial partnerships with African countries and also get a chance to meet delegations from around the world. So this is a unique exhibition in a unique part of the world and a real opportunity for us to engage in business over the next few days. My impressions so far are, I'm, it's absolutely amazing. I, I was here uh, two years ago and obviously today is media day and it's setting up so they're very busy setting up and tomorrow and over the next couple of days we'll get a better view of uh, an understanding of what is going on but it's looking fantastic. We're also keen to share the experience we've had from the Olympic Games, we've just done the Commonwealth Games, to share those experiences with uh, South Africa and actually learn from them too. And also perhaps share how we do our procurement in the UK and perhaps over the, over the next few years learn how we can work closer together. So it's a great opportunity, a great exhibition and we're really ready to go. Inside and background on the AAD, I spoke to its show director, Simpiwe Hamilton, in our Features Africa studio. Welcome to Features Africa. Great to have you on the show. Thank you very much, ma'am, and thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Let's begin by talking about the relevance of this exhibition. Take us back to its history. How did it all begin and how much has it actually grown since it began? Mm -hmm. The show itself in its current form, as you said, is in its eighth installment, which means it's been going on for about the last 16 years because we hold it every two years. But it started uh, with two independent shows. One was a commercial aviation show that started in 1975, and the other one was a defense expo that had been started in the late 90s and were merged uh, around 1999 into a singular show. And it's grown significantly. Um, for the first time this year, we were occupying virtually all the hangars that are potentially available to us. Mm -hmm. uh, we're now sitting at more than 12,000 uh, square meters in, in floor space indoors and about 7,000 square meters outdoors, all of which is fully sold for this year. In terms of the number of exhibitors that you attract the, and participants, the, I'm sure that will also speak about growth. That grows with that, and you start seeing it in, in two areas. The number of companies, we're sitting at more than 300, 350 companies that are taking place, and we still have a waiting list that mm -hmm. we will not be able to, to service this year. But we also have... Um, more national pavilions, that is companies coming through under the national flag organized as a, a, a pavilion of a specific nation. So we have the Russian pavilion, the Chinese pavilion, the Indian pavilion, the French, the English, the Americans. There's about 14 national pavilions that are there and that, that starts So these the are stature. now suppliers coming through from other countries yes, globally? These are exhibitors, suppliers, mm -hmm. defense manufacturers coming in from uh, sure. other parts of the world. Uh, to come and showcase their wares in South Africa as and, well. And how does this one in Africa compare to the other exhibitions that take place? Similar ones in other mm. parts of the world? It's amongst the biggest on the continent. It is the only one and biggest of its kind. And uh, we, we rate ourselves amongst the, the other top five shows, being uh, shows like IDEX in the UAE, IDEF in Istanbul, mm. Turkey, DSA in Malaysia, uh, LED in Brazil and DSAI in the UK. Um, and we, we are of a similar stature. Uh, we 
recognize each other's standing and that's why even in the show in the calendar of international shows and exhibitions mm -hmm. you find we have now secured our space uh, it is known that every second year in september this show will take place <laughs> In the South African defense industry, the Paramount Group is driving forward innovation in a very big way. Now, they are actually considered as a world leader in the space of defense and security. I had the opportunity of interviewing the group's chairman, Ivo Ichikovitz, earlier in our Features Africa studio. But first, let's take a look at the Parabot, which is Paramount's version of Robocop. It was actually unveiled today, and its aim is to quell rhino poaching in Africa. Parabot is there to symbolize the move of the defense industry into the robotics realm and it signifies our announcement of a new robotics division that will focus our energies on this sphere. Welcome to Features Africa, great to have you on the show. Thank you. Let's begin by talking about the relevance of this exhibition which is believed to be the biggest in Africa on the continent and one of the bigger ones in the world. So this exhibition is a, is a highlight of of our, um, of our season, it happens every two years, and it's an opportunity for South Africa to showcase, or for Africa to shake, showcase to the world the innovation that takes place right here on the African continent. And for Paramount, it's very important because we've, we're very proudly African. We, we like to celebrate our Africanness, and our organization works extensively all over the world, and we very seldom get an opportunity to show our own market what we do elsewhere in the world. Mm -hmm. Speaking about innovation, South Africa is certainly leading the way in Africa because it's a very nascent, developing industry, if you have to look at it. Well, I consider the, the capability we have in South Africa as an asset of the continent. You know, the aerospace and defense industry is an industry that takes many, many years to develop. The skills take a long time to develop. There has to be a market um, demand that creates the requirement to develop, and we have that in South Africa. But this capability is an asset of the African continent, and I'm a great believer in the fact that Africa has a responsibility to look after its own security and its own defense capability and can't rely on the rest of the world. And how, we, how are we progressing in that respect? I think we're progressing extremely well. You know, Paramount has been working in Africa for the last 20 years, but we also work elsewhere in the world. And today, less than 20% of our business is in Africa. And that's not because our African business has shrunk. Mm -hmm. It's because the experience we've gained in Africa has started becoming very relevant to security threats elsewhere in the world. That's interesting. So we work in 40 countries around mm -hmm. the world, but based on the experience we've gained in Africa. At an event like this, you're bound to rub shoulders with all of the leaders in the game of aerospace and defense. No doubt, Airbus is one of them. Now, they're spending a fortune on research and development, and I chatted to their vice president, Simon Ward, about their strategy. Airbus has formed meaningful partnerships with governments, uh, with Danel South Africa in particular, and Aerosud as well, uh, to develop components or to contribute to the development of defense aircrafts. How, how are those agreements progressing? Uh, it, it's it's been a, a, a sort of stormy process, really, the A400M story with South Africa. Originally, South Africa was part of the original um, procurement of, of the A400M, and because of that, there was a deal struck with with South Africa and, and Airbus to really develop Danel and Aerosud in a, in the ability to design as well as just manufacture. So typically they have been manufacturing to, to existing designs. Mm -hmm. And the A400M was really the beginning of design and develop for, for Airbus anyway, it, mm -hmm. with South African companies. And when the A400M was canceled in South Africa, mm -hmm. it, it led to a, a real look at, do we stay in Africa? Do we not? Um, do, do we withdraw the packages? Do we put them out onto the market? Um, and we did actually look at putting those, seriously look at putting those packages from Dinell and Aerosud somewhere else in the world. You know, always when you have military, it's, it's uh, there's offset and, and, and that tends to drive, mm -hmm. you know, where, where you're selling is where you have to do some work. 
But in the end, we decided to, to stick with South Africa. We feel that South Africa is a strategic importance to us. It's always been important right through our history. The very first aircraft, some of the first aircraft we sold were, were to South Africa, and it was done because it's a hot and a high altitude landing zone. It's, it's quite a special market, mm -hmm. and strategically that, that, that has always been seen as quite important. Douglas McClure is the editor of the African Armed Forces Journal. Now he reminds us why it's so important to examine our skills on the continent to come up with African solutions when tackling the challenge of defense. Welcome to Features Africa, great to have you on the show. Thank you. A lot of violent conflicts in Africa, this is not an unusual phenomenon. Military needs are therefore quite huge in Africa, yet the defense industry is not so spectacular and very small. Why is that? Well, I'm, I'm glad you didn't say the defense industry in Africa is moribund because it, it certainly isn't. Mm -hmm. But let's just go back very quickly to your starting point. You're right that Africa is beset with enormous problems. And in fact, this continent is now on the cusp. It is on the brink of epoch-making decisions which can go either one way into disaster or into progress and into development and into setting an example to the rest of the world mm -hmm. what can be accomplished. And so why is the AAD Expo so important? Because for the first time, there are a series of countries in Africa, some of them with serious problems like Nigeria and its problems with Boko Haram, uh, Egypt that has just gone through an incipient revolution, South Africa that has come through transformation. But these countries have their own armaments industries and they've specialized in different fields. And what is so wonderful about AAD is that it offers the platform it creates the opportunity for these countries now to get together mm -hmm. and to look at how they can mix and match their resources and work together to create an all African armaments industry, which is indigenous, which creates opportunities for its own people and its own technicians, and which has technical spin-offs that can go into the civil sector of our societies and mm -hmm. from which we can all benefit. For the highlights of AAD 2014, watch this space over the next few days. Go to www.featuresafrica.tv to access the content for broadcast and news online purposes.